good, good question. So the liver actually has a capacity. And one of the factors in high cholesterol is after you see the capacity of the liver to hold on to things, it's just, gonna, it's just gotta dump it out. It's gotta get rid of it. Cholesterol is released in the body in only one way. Uh, it's excreted in the, in the feces. So at that level, it will go out. Your body will tend to recycle it. So there's a recycling system that, that will pick it up out of the feces, bring it back, and that's actually a target of some anti-cholesterol drugs as well, where they inhibit the recycling of the cholesterol and actually let it be excreted. Stuart. Good question. Do the other lipoprotein complexes have a form of endocytosis? The answer is no, just the LDLs. So they go out, they get the insides chewed away. The LDLs are the only ones that get endocytosed. Cholesterol is taken in with the LDLs. So the LDLs are full of cholesterol. I'm not sure I'm answering your question. So didn't you say that no, the cholesterol, no amount of cholesterol remains the same from the LDL to I, the LDL to LDL? That's correct. So the amount of cholesterol stays the same. So the only way cells get cholesterol for their membranes is by internalizing an LDL, which has cholesterol, or by making its own. Because cells can make their own cholesterol as well. Yes, sir. Yep. How are what being used? The right. Okay. So what's happening is you're peeling off fatty acids because remember the fats when you treat them with a the lipase is going to make fatty acids. Fatty acids get metabolized like I showed the other day. So they come in through beta oxidation. They get a, a CoA attached, and beta oxidation uh, breaks them down. Does that answer your question? Okay, now, um, another thing to remember about fatty acids is they act like detergents. And I've already said that's bad. It's gonna denature your protein, it's gonna cause problems. So we don't see free fatty acids floating around in our bloodstream. Free fatty acids get gobbled up by serum albumin, one of the most abundant proteins in our body. Serum albumin grabs the fatty acids and helps them to get transported through the body, and that's, that's a different mechanism. Okay, well, that's enough for that. Questions? Maybe we should have a song. You guys are gonna think I only know one tune because the song I have for cholesterol actually used the same tune as the last two days. By now you should know the tune. Let's sing it loudly. It's called To Make a Cholesterol. Some things that you can build with acetyl-CoA's are joined together partly thanks to thiolase. They come together, one, two, three, six carbons known as HMG, and you're on your way to make a cholesterol. To synthesize a mevalonate in the cell requires reducing HMG-CoA as well. The enzyme is a reductase controlled in allosteric ways when the cell's impelled to make a cholesterol. The mevalonate made in metabolic schemes gets decarboxylated down to isoprenes. They're linked together willy-nil to build a PP geranil in the cell's routines to make a cholesterol. A single step links farnesils, but that's not all. The squalene rearranges to lanosterol. From that, there's 19 steps to go before the sterols apropos, which you must recall to make a cholesterol. The regulation of the scheme's complex in ways inhibited by feedback of the reductase. And statins mimic, so they say, the lake, look of HMG-CoA. So we sing their praise and not make cholesterol. Okay. You guys weren't very loud there, so. Um, blah, blah. Okay, I think that's enough for here. Was there a question? Okay, so now we get to turn our attention to something completely different. Now for something completely different. Photosynthesis. The, bot the botany mafia is going to like this one, right? 
the Botany Mafia is going to make the best grades on this part of the exam. Is that right? The shaking the head no, does that mean that you're not, that you are part of the Botany Mafia or you're not part of the Botany Mafia? Definitely not. Oh. Okay. Well, the good thing about photosynthesis is it looks a heck of a lot like oxidative phosphorylation. It looks like a sort of an odd combination of oxidative phosphorylation, electron transport, and the Peto's phosphate pathway. Wow. I hated all those things when I went through them the first time. Now I've got to combine all three of them, right? It's even worse. Well, I think you'll see that it's, it's actually fairly straightforward if we know those other ones. And I'm, I'm going to spare you a lot of the details uh, because I know that you're not a big fan of enough to, uh, extra details. Photosynthesis is a process that happens in cholestro uh, cholesterol. In chlor I've got cholesterol in my head, don't I? In chloroplasts. Chloroplasts are plant organelles, and they have these specialized structures that look like this. Okay, chloroplasts are sort of like mitochondria, okay, except for the action of the chloroplast is not the chloroplast as a whole like the mitochondrion is, but instead inside these little thylakoid spaces around in here. Okay, inside these little thylakoid spaces, we're going to see that a lot of the action is occurring inside of these little spaces inside of here. Okay. The stroma is the sort of outside uh, parts of the spaces, uh, outside of these uh, granular uh, things that we see here. And I'll talk about that in a bit. Okay. Well, what happens during um, photosynthesis? Well, first of all, you know that photosynthesis, or maybe you don't know. If you don't, I'll tell you. Photosynthesis occurs in what are called two steps, a cycle called the light cycle and another cycle called the dark cycle. The light cycle depends on light. The dark cycle does not depend on light. It doesn't depend on dark either, though. The dark cycle can go on during the light. But the light cycle will definitely not go on during the dark. Okay. In the light cycle, the energy of the sun is harvested. And by harvesting, we'll see what that means in a second, but it's harvested so that it can be used to make things during the dark cycle. The harvesting of the light is ultimately going to make ATP. As we'll see, it's a multi-step process to get to the ATP. But the aim of the light cycle is to make ATP, and it's also to make a reduced electron carrier known as NADPH. Okay. Now I'm going to just tell you in words what happens in the light cycle. We'll look at the details in a bit, but I'm going to tell you in words what happens. A photon of light hits the chlorophyll. Okay hits the chlorophyll. The chlorophyll absorbs that energy and the absorption of that energy is used to split water. Okay? It's used to split water. Now, the splitting of water produces oxygen. So plants, when they're doing photosynthesis, release oxygen. It's one of the major reasons we have oxygen in the atmosphere, plants, photosynthesis. Okay. Well, if you split water into oxygen, what you do is you've released some electrons. You've released some electrons. You've actually oxidized water, believe it or not. Now, those electrons that get released move Guess where? Through electron transport-like system in the membrane of these uh, thylakoid cells. So now that the electrons are moving through a series of complexes, and what do you suppose that they're doing? What do they do in the mitochondria? They pump protons. In the, in the chloroplast, they're also pumping protons. But interestingly, instead of pumping the protons out of the thylakoid spaces, they're pumping them in. Just like it was in electron transport. It's just that they're pointed the other direction. So it is a mechanical process, as any pump is. 
Now we have a high concentration of protons in compared to out. What do you suppose that high concentration is going to be used to do? It's going to be used to make ATP. And the ATP is made in a mushroom-like molecule that looks just like the ATP synthase we saw in the mitochondria. Does that make sense? So, so far, photosynthesis isn't too bad, I hope. Yes, ma'am? Uh, it actually has a long honking name, and we're going to call it ATP synthase again. Okay? Because it's very much like ATP synthase. Well, those electrons, we haven't accounted for the electrons. When we talked about the electrons in the electron transport system of the mitochondria, where did the electrons go? What was the terminal electron acceptor? Oxygen. Oxygen. And what do we make? Water, right? We've sort of reversed the process. Now we're taking electrons from water, passing them through a series of complexes. We've got to put them onto something. And it turns out we put the electrons onto NADP, making NADPH. Now I'm going to show you a figure with all that. I just want to talk to you in words first. That's what's happening. These are the reactions of the light cycle of photosynthesis. I'll summarize. Energy from light is used to split water. Oxygen is released. Electrons and protons are released. Protons staying in the solution there. Electrons move through the complexes of the thylakoid membrane, generating a proton gradient. Protons are pumped into that thylakoid space. So when they come out, they make ATP. The electrons are ultimately donated to NADP to make NADPH. Yes, ma'am? Protons are moved into the thylakoid space. So they're pumped in, not out. But the effect is the same. We've got a proton gradient. And all that really matters is that we have a gradient. The protons went out. So what we have to do is position the ATP synthase in the right direction, and we've got ATP. Make sense? You guys look tired. I think we'll call it an early day. What do you say? <laughs> See? Well, unless you want to get extra credit. Oh, okay. <laughs> so if anybody wants to leave, just feel free. All right, why don't we do that? I think you guys have been good. So let's, um, even if you didn't sing very loudly, you know, that's always an important thing is singing loudly. So maybe the next time we have one of these, if you sing loudly, you might get even more extra credit. You never know. So let's take out a piece of paper. And on that piece of paper, I want your name. And I want your ID number. And I want one of two things. Either something that you learned in lecture today or a joke. It better be the funnier it is, perhaps the better it'll be. I don't know. Do I care if it's dirty? It doesn't bother me. <laughs> Actually, let's just make it a joke. That way we'll, oh, no, I'll go ahead. If you learn something or a joke, okay, all right, all right. Whatever you learn today or a joke. And whenever you're done with that, you can turn it into me and go celebrate your weekend. It pays to come to class on Fridays, you know?